taking long enough to get here. You know, we do have a serious problem on our hands. I can always let you try and handle this yourself. It's spreading faster than we can stop it. There has to be another way. You mean they just? Yes. No. They... Mime tutorials. No! Yes, finally! The answer was so simple and we all missed it. It works. Good day everyone and welcome. That was a little catchy intro the Lord gave me while planning this video and it was super fun to do. Now, today I wanna help you understand how to make your tutorial watching a more practical help beyond the norm and enable you to use it later on in your own projects. Imitation, though part of the learning process, will not get you far because as a sole goal will allow you to accomplish the imitation but afterward discard most of the information because the goal has been achieved. Similar to finals in school. This makes miming a total, total, total waste of your time. The goal is understanding what you are miming. This requires a desire to learn, a calm environment, and proactive mental participation. This solution? It's called transfer. Transfer is the process of taking knowledge and applying it in a different location or situation in a practical way, like learning the right kinds of math through which you can design a high quality bridge that won't collapse when someone sneezes on it. I have noticed there is a lack of transfer when it comes to tutorials. Everyone seems to transfer to some extent, but there is potential for so, so, so much more. For this video, we'll focus on transferring knowledge from one render engine to another in Blender. A render engine helps us to put our ideas down in pictures or video through a digital interface. This is an applied example from the fountain tutorial from last year done in Blender Render and now discontinued but still widely used render engine. This result can actually be achieved in Cycles and Eevee as well. It may not be 100% the same, in fact it may even be better, but you can still achieve the same style. Do note that some engines do not have NPR shaders built in, so heavy workarounds might be needed in post-production, but should again still be technically possible. Um, Lux Render is an example of such an engine. When we create, we use a render engine combined with assets and settings to tell the computer what we want and the engine proceeds to build the final image based on rules it was created around. In this case, you know, laws of nature, that sort of thing. Blender technically has three render engines. Not official logos, by the way. These render engines differ from each other in a few very important ways. On the interface side, Blender Render is menu-based with the option of nodes, while Cycles and Eevee are primarily node-based and functions are in slightly different locations. For example, Cycles and Eevee combine the process of textures and shaders, where in Blender Render they are two components. Under the hood, we find much more major differences. Blender Render, for example, is a combination of a ray tracer and game engine. Cycles is a full ray tracer built for realism. Eevee is very much based on modern game engines with a strong focus on physically based rendering or photorealism. Basically this. It means we can simply take one scene into another engine and expect it to transfer flawlessly just because we use the drop down menu. There is a lot of artistic adjustments that have to be made in order to get the engine to respond the way you want it to. The answer is to make it work for you. For example, Cycles is built for photorealism, but you can achieve basically the same things as in Blender Render, which is now considered mostly an NPR engine. Modeling conventions remain virtually the same across engines in Blender, with the exception of a few things having been moved around, like I mentioned before. 
The big question then becomes, how do we take something from Blender Render and build it in a different engine or vice versa? Let's break it down. Since we are working with Blender, our modeling conventions will remain the same for the sake of the examples. This means our animation will also remain unchanged from a basic rigging standpoint. Change will therefore mostly come down to render layers and passes, particles, shading, textures, and any an other animation that applies to variables that need checking. Our first example will be this version of the distorted noise texture from Blender Render. How do we make this in Eevee, for example? Well, what does it consist of? It's one texture warping another. If we can do that in Eevee, which we can, we are at least one step ahead. Do we have the specific textures needed to warp each other? Again, yes, we do. Sometime, I believe it was last year, the developers added the Voronoi crackle pattern to cycles. Before then, it was technically impossible, as far as I know, to make this texture. Thankfully, I did get an alternative, which you can check here. It's okay, uh, and it was a temporary option, but thankfully, we can just move past that. So we add a Voronoi crackle texture and we add a noise texture and we distort by adding the color option into the vector input. We can do much better than this though by adding a texture coordinate node so we can dampen the effect. You can of course go much further to manipulate this texture but this is the basic recipe. Breaking something down into its base components makes it easy to see if the engine can achieve it and what we need to do for lack of a better way of saying it, to bend it to our will as artists. The addition of a mix note gives us this. Another example will be this action line tutorial. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to cover the entire process, um, but in order to achieve the same, we still use a cylinder as a cone and we still use shape keys to shift the point where we want it to be on the screen. To texture it, we have to understand how Eevee's texturing system works. One example I mentioned in the tutorial is the anchor for the texture is no longer the center of the UV, but in the corner of the UV, you know where the cursor sits by default. That means we need to compensate any rotation with movement to make sure everything makes sense visually. By experience, this has been the case for cycles as well, though I do speak under correction as somebody who rarely uses it. In Blender Render, we use the cloud texture for the lines. Is there a cloud texture in EVO cycles? Yes, there is a noise texture that is virtually the same. Referring back to the um, distorted noise. You can still use any number of other textures for a similar result, so you're not really tied down to this one. You know, just know the tools in your toolbox and you should be fine. The advantage to Eevee is that, totally by grace, we get a seamless texture, despite aiming to produce a mirrored seamless result. I can't explain the technical side of it, but I really enjoy the benefit of it immensely. Nice surprises like this come the more you experiment and try and fail and keep trying. We also have to add color to the cone. In the EV tutorial, the Lord helped me achieve the same result without needing to resort to compositing like in Blender Render. So this is an example where a different engine can mean that your result is a little bit easier to achieve. I do believe it's doable in Blender Render this way too, but at the same time, compositing was the best way for the knowledge I had. Animation does need a workaround though. Since EV is still under construction, there is no way to edit the animation of nodes directly, so you have to use drivers. With Blender Render, you could simply animate the offset and straighten out the curve. This will come to EV, I'm sure. This is where we hit a speed bump for many users. How did I know to use drivers in this instance and not just try to compensate with many keyframes? Well, because I've tried keyframes and it just didn't work like that. The speed remained horribly, horribly inconsistent. I had previously come into contact with custom properties for rigging, 
Uh, these often use drivers to control multiple shape keys over separate shapes at the same time to give overall emotional adjustment to characters' faces. So it just so happens that we can edit the curves of the custom properties in 2.8. So this became the obvious solution. Know your engine, know your tools. Do be aware that the next example does contain flashing images. And finally, we have the example I posted on social media based on this tutorial. This to me is an example where you can achieve something better because of new tools that respond faster. Again, modeling process is virtually identical. The biggest difference is the final put together of the image. I did not use freestyle, but the inverse hull effect for the outlines. I avoid freestyle at this point in 2.8 because LA and PR is in progress and should replace freestyle some point in the future. I do still know freestyle because I still use uh, 2.77a for another project, Exodus 7 to 12, link in the description, go check that out. And I'll also put a link in the description to LA and PR. For the glowing effects, I use the uh, screen space effects, particularly just bloom. And for, of course, adding the shaking and the action lines, I rendered the action lines separately, also in Eevee, and then just use the VSE to shake it and add the lines over it. Very, very simple process, and I use 2.79's VSE for the editing. Render engines differ very much in how they work. If we pay close attention to what every tool does in tutorials, how they add up to the result and know what tools we have available by learning our engines, transfer should be as natural as math and bridges. And now it's time for a challenge. On the screen you can see many tutorials. I challenge you guys to go and remake a Blender render tutorial in Cycles or vice versa or try something in Eevee. Have a great one and God bless you.